Hello, folks, and good afternoon or morning or whatever it is for you guys. Today we're going to be talking about plants, specifically plant reproduction. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Got our PowerPoint over here. So, plant reproduction and life cycle. So let's do a quick review here. So mitosis is where we're going from a diploid cell, a single diploid cell, and it is going to duplicate its chromosomes and then divide into two more cells, which <coughs> are then still diploid. So as two copies of each allele, and all of a sudden, creates copies of each of those and distributes one copy to each of the two daughter cells. So you have two diploid cells at the end of mitosis. Over here on meiosis, this is uh, what we use to produce sex cells, so egg and sperm. You start with one diploid cell, you duplicate all of those chromosomes, think back to 1406, uh, where we are creating copies of each of those sister chromatids here. And then we give one of each allele to each of these two daughter cells. And they have a duplicated copy of those attached there, which are then split into the two daughter cells of each of those lineages. And so you start with one diploid cell and you wind up with four haploid cells. So you're cutting the number of chromosomes in half when you undergo meiosis. This is good when you're about to merge two cells together, uh, as in sex. Uh, that way you wind up with a diploid cell ready to start mitosis. There you go. Mitosis. If you start with haploid, you wind up with haploid. If you start with diploid, you wind up with diploid. Meiosis, you're reducing a diploid cell to a haploid cell. All right, so this is a very generalized plant life cycle. And you can see here, we don't have any pictures of any particular plant. And as we go through, each of these different plants are going to have basically this going on with some sort of variation to this system. As we get into uh, our higher plants, you might notice that it gets a little bit complicated. Anyways, well, real quick, let's go over this. So normally, let's start with fertilization. So after a plant has been pollinated, produces a zygote, a fertilized egg, undergoes a whole bunch of mitosis, turns into a sporophyte, sporophyte, let me, uh, yeah, that's better for me. <clears throat> Turns into your sporophyte, your multicellular generation, and then it undergoes some mitos meiosis to produce haploid spores. So once we are on this side of the dashed line, we are all haploid. These spores undergo mitosis to produce metophytes. They undergo mitosis still to produce gametes such as egg or sperm. Yes, plants have sperm. These then meet, undergo fertilization, and the cycle begins anew. All right, let's see how this actually works in our phyla. So bryophytes. They have a life cycle dominated by your gametophyte generation. So let's go back real quick. Your gametophyte, so right here, which is kind of weird uh, because that's haploid, which is the total opposite of the way we do things. But turns out um, most things don't do it the way we do. Anyways, so the life cycle is dominated by your gametophyte generation, so a haploid generation. Sporophyte generation is a temporary reproductive structure. Mature gametophytes form antheridia, which produce sperm, which, as you can probably imagine, means it's male, and the archegonia, which produces eggs. So 
So whenever you see this word anther, think male. Whenever you see arc like that, think female. So antheridia, male structure producing sperm, archegonia, female structure producing eggs. So here is our life cycle of mosses modified uh, to show basically <clears throat> how they're all going to do this. So when you go down to the park and walk along the river and you see some mosses, unless they've got this little dingle bop sticking out on top of them, you're normally just going to see these gametophytes, these little tiny leafy structures, whoops, let's go back, that look like a miniature bed of grass. And at the very tip of those, you might have your antheridium or archegonium. So you start with these spores that have been produced, they land, they grow into these little tiny miniature plant looking structures. You can see they have things that look kind of like roots. They are true roots, of course. Um, and they have all these little fine leaf-like structures. They don't have leaves, they don't have vascular tissue or anything fancy like that. And then at the very top, you have your reproductive structures, your archegonium for your antheridium, which are producing sperm. And that's why these guys rely on a nice film of water. So anywhere where you get a good heavy morning dew. Again, rivers are a great place for this, even in dry areas, because they'll be cooler than the surrounding area and will create fog, which creates this little microclimate of higher humidity on the banks surrounding them. Anyways, and they rely on that because these sperm will swim out of these antheridium through the fine morning dew or after a good rain over to the archegonium and fertilize them. So goes into the archegonium, down the little tube, and if we're lucky, and I believe we have at least one specimen where we can see an egg in there, orium, and it undergoes fertilization, forms a zygote, undergoes a whole bunch of mitosis. Now remember, this is all still happening right here at the tip of our gametophyte. So at the very tip of that, it's been fertilized, and then from that zygote, it produces this long stalk with a little tiny miniature corn cob looking thing or a little tiny, like a flower bud. And that is the sporophyte generation, the only part of it that's going to be diploid. It's going to be produce this sporangium at the top of it that is full of spores. Then it undergoes a bunch of meiosis, well, it undergoes meiosis, and these diploid cells turn into haploid spores, which then are released into the environment and our cycle begins new. So let's look at some examples of that. So this is our male, our moss antheridium, and it'll produce these oblong structures full of grainy material. And what these oblong structures are, are your antheridium, and whenever it's very ripe, has a nice dew on everything, they will burst and release all these grainy little things, which are sperm. So, real quick. All right. So, there we go. Let me share my screen. Look at that. Picture perfect. Oh, man. So this is at 40x total magnification. And you can see we are looking at the entire antheridium head here. So this is the male structure. If you were looking at this and say, for example, here, let me. There we go. That's a pretty good looking picture. 
So say for example, you're given this picture on the practical. You should be able to tell us that you're looking at male structure, that this is the antheridium, not the archegonium, and that this, all this grainy material in here, is sperm. Got it? So this is moss, this is your bryophyte, this is male, this is the antheridium producing, pardon me, sperm. Okie doke. So let's go back to our PowerPoint. All right, next up is our moss archegonium. So let's check out the lady reproductive structure for the moss. So let's stop our share real quick. Okay. All right, here we go. So this is our moss archegonial head. So this is what the re female reproductive structure will look like. There's normally a few eggs in here, but remember this is a, a paper thin section that we've taken of our archegonial head. And we just have one egg that is in view here. So again, if you're looking at this, you need to be able to tell me that this is a moss, this is the female, so archegonial head, and that little dot is the egg. And sure enough, it does kind of look like a little tiny fried egg. So let's go ahead and take a picture of, it, of that because it looks so good. Go up to a little bit higher magnification. There we go. You may see any of these pictures on the practical or one similar to it. You may need to be able to identify these structures. So let's go back to our, our PowerPoint. All right, so if you see them in the park and they're producing these long little stalks with little tiny flower buds at the tip of them, as it so appears, that would be the sporophyte generation. <clears throat> and these small leafy structures at the bottom are going to be your gametophytes. Over here we have some true plants, we just ignore those. So sporophyte, these are going to be diploid, gametophyte, haploid. Next step, let's take a look at some of our, oh wait, actually let's stop there and we're going to uh, do another video for ferns because that's kind of a, a big bite to chew on. Anyways, so let's go ahead and end, the, end this video for now.